Hello and welcome to this review of Super Monkey Ball Deluxe which was released in 2005 for the PS2 and the original Xbox. Now, last time I actually reviewed the newest game in the Super Monkey Ball series, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, and after being slightly disappointed with what that game had to offer, I wanted to go back to one of the games in the series I was the most familiar with to see if it's as good as I actually remember it being, or not. So. Without further ado, let's pop this in and get started. Super Monkey Ball Deluxe is an enhanced version of both Super Monkey Ball and Super Monkey Ball 2, but in one package and with additional content on top of what was found in the original two games. The major draw to this game as opposed to the original two games for me was not only the additional content, but also the fact that Deluxe was on the PS2 whereas the original two games were exclusive to the GameCube, a system that I was a lot less passionate about at the time. So with the release of Deluxe, I was finally able to take part in the Monkey Ball madness. Right off the bat, the presentation of the game is pretty incredible. The menus are well designed and easy to navigate, and the music is upbeat and light-hearted instantly setting the tone for the rest of the game. Another thing that's apparent straight away is the sheer amount of content this game has to offer from the get-go. We have a story mode, a challenge mode, a competition mode, and 12 mini-games that are all accessible as soon as you start playing. What's interesting about this game for me is that despite having owned it since I was a kid, I've actually never played the story mode. Isn't that insane? Normally in video games, the story mode would be where the bulk of content is, but with Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, it feels like even if that story mode was cut out, there would be enough content to warrant a full game even without it. So the story mode is, I guess, what you might consider to be the main mode of the game. It's how you progress the story and unlock the cutscenes, and it's the mode where you feel the biggest sense of progression. The story itself is fairly straightforward and child-friendly, but it has some interesting twists and turns along the way that make it enjoyable to experience. The basic gist is that an evil monkey called Dr. Bad Boon, which is a great name by the way, has stolen all of the bananas from the village where the four protagonists, Ai Ai, Mimi, Baby and Gong Gong live. The four of them then chase Dr. Bad Boon down in an attempt to capture him and get the bananas back. While it's a simple story, the thing that I really appreciate is all of the little details, like all of the character interactions and how all of the personalities are put across through the different reactions to things. I also love how Dr. Bad Boon is constantly obsessing over Mimi, wanting to marry her and being extremely creepy whenever she's around. Plus, one of the greatest selling points of this game is that it includes a good old-fashioned bit of monkey nudity. You've got to love that bad boon bod. These details elevate what could have otherwise been a forgettable and basic story, and the inclusion of these Japanese magical girl transformation sequences really help make the experience more enjoyable too. <laughs> The core gameplay is straightforward monkey ball action. You use the left analogue stick to manipulate the levels and roll the balls around the stage, and the objective is to overcome obstacles and get to a goal. You can choose to go quickly, or if you're feeling confident, you could try to collect as many bananas as possible for a greater score payout too. What's great about this game though is how many ideas the developers had for interesting levels. There's not really any two that feel too similar, which is impressive considering the huge amount of levels featured in the game. Sometimes levels will be a test of balance, some will be a test of timing, some will be a test of accuracy, and some throw in more unique gimmicks that test you in other ways. Some standout levels for me were this one where there's a URL for the Super Monkey Ball website printed onto a wall which tries to knock you off of the stage. There's also this one where you have to get through one of two goals which is skating up and down a half pipe. 
There's this one where you need to carefully avoid a spinning top moving at extremely high speeds. There's just loads of really standout levels that are extremely creative and abstract, and it's a blast to go through. Something I really liked is that to progress from one world to the next, you have to complete 10 levels within the world you're on. However, there's a total of 20 levels in each world, so if you get stuck on a certain level, you can simply choose to skip it and try another one instead. This is amazing because the game does get incredibly difficult in the later worlds, so having this option of choosing not to do the levels you don't like gives you a lot of freedom and makes it so the game doesn't become irritating. The world themes are really cool too, because a lot of them are unlike anything you normally see in other video games. I mean, sure, you have the standard grassy level, because no video game can live without that, but then you also have a world set in a whale's mouth, or a level set floating above a cooking pot. Or there's also a set of levels that are floating above a washing machine placed in a spa. What makes this even better is that by progressing through the story mode, these level themes are given context too because you get to see firsthand how you enter the whale's mouth, or why you end up in a spa, and it makes the game feel more cohesive rather than kinda having random level themes for no reason. The one fairly major issue with the story mode is that the menus are quite slow to respond to your button presses. This isn't a problem elsewhere in the game, but on the level select screen of the story mode, it's almost like the PS2 has to go through a loading screen every time you hover over a new level. It feels quite clunky to be honest. It's also a bit weird how collecting the bananas in story mode doesn't really do anything. It gives you more score, but really, who cares about that? It would have been nice if it unlocked something, but as far as I'm aware, the only unlock connected to the bananas, in story mode at least, is if you get 999 of them, and that simply gives you an extra life in the challenge mode. It would have been great if there were unlockable characters, or even some unlockable skins tied to the story mode in some way, but sadly, the game doesn't feature any extra characters or skins at all. The challenge mode of the game is fairly similar to the story mode, and you'll even come across some of the same levels in both modes, but they use different level themes to give them a bit of visual variety. They also aren't in the same order in these modes, and both have unique levels, so they end up feeling quite different in terms of the levels you'll come across. Basically, the challenge mode is a marathon of levels that you need to complete in a row without losing all of your lives and continues. This mode feels more fast-paced, and arcade-like, and is one of the modes I played the most as a kid. It's split into three different difficulties, with the higher difficulties having more levels and featuring much more complex levels to complete too. Unlike in story mode, you can't skip levels here, so this mode is much more difficult. It almost makes the story mode feel like a tutorial in a way, because in story mode you have infinite lives and don't need to worry too much about collecting bananas. In challenge mode though, collecting 100 bananas gives you an extra life, so you'll be wanting to grab them whenever you can because if you complete each of these difficulties without using a continue, you can unlock even more levels to play through. What's slightly disappointing about these unlockable levels though is that to access them, you have to play through the normal modes all over again because they don't become accessible from the main menu once you've got to them. That's a bit irritating and kind of puts me off of even trying to do them without using a continue, because I'm aware I'll probably just die on the extra levels and have to do the whole thing all over again anyway. Still though, even without the added extra content, the game still has a ton of levels, and it's really fun despite sometimes being infuriatingly difficult. Because there's no level select screen for this mode, it also doesn't have the issue of the slow menu navigation that the story mode has, which is great. However, the load in between each level is slightly too long and it doesn't help how the music cuts out while it's loading and then starts from where it left off when the next level begins. I feel like if the music had just continued through the loading screen, this wouldn't have felt so awkward. But still, it's not too bad of an issue. It just looks a bit janky and probably could have been made to feel a bit more smooth. <laughs> Ready? 
When you finish this mode, either by completing all of the levels on your difficulty, or by getting a game over by losing all five of your continues, you'll be given a total score based on how quickly you completed levels and how many bananas you got, and this will be put on a leaderboard. The theory here being that if you give a friend a go, you can compete to see who can get the highest score. It's a neat idea, but it would work a lot better if there were online leaderboards. I mean, obviously that's not really a valid criticism because this game came out when online console gaming was in its infancy, but still. A fairly annoying thing I noticed while playing both story mode and challenge mode was that the timer is constantly making a noise as it ticks down. It's just not really necessary for it to do it every single second, and I feel like maybe it should have only started ticking when it got to 30 seconds, or maybe just not done it at all. It's just a bit distracting, which, to be fair, could be the point, and to be honest, you do learn to just tune it out after a while, but still, it's annoying. <laughs> An awesome thing about challenge mode that makes it all the more replayable and gives more value to the leaderboards is the fact that you can play it with up to four players. You have to take it in turns, with each player completing a level or losing a life, and then another player getting control. Which may seem a bit redundant, but when you're being competitive, it can actually be really fun and you feel a lot of pressure from the other players watching your every move. If you're more in the mood for simultaneous multiplayer though, this game has you covered because of the fact that there's a competition mode, which is basically the same as challenge mode, but it supports up to four players simultaneously. The thing is with this mode though, is that while it is fun, I feel like a lot more could have been done with it. For example, you're limited to playing a maximum of five levels in a row, and with the amount of levels accessible in this mode, this could have been made a lot longer. But my biggest issue with this mode is that I feel like the simultaneous multiplayer aspect could have been put to a much greater use in a co-op mode, where maybe there's two goals and each player needs to reach both goals and help each other out along the way. There could have been splits in the path and switches that change the other person's course, and I'm sure the developers could have come up with loads of amazing ideas for this. But yeah, while it is a bit of a shame that no mode like this exists, what is presented is still pretty good regardless, and I find it so, so weird how Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD doesn't have a mode like this. There's no wonder I was disappointed with the lack of content coming from Deluxe to Banana Blitz HD. I mean, Deluxe has a story mode, challenge mode, and competition mode, which across all three of these modes results in there being over 300 levels and you can play all of them in multiplayer. When you compare that to the non-existent multiplayer of Banana Blitz HD and the 100 total levels which include the rubbish bosses, you can begin to see what an empty husk of a game that is in comparison. But we've not even covered what could be my most played mode in Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, that being the minigames. Every single one of these minigames are pretty darn great, and still to this day, this is one of my go-to games when I want to play a minigame compilation. Every single one of them has a surprising amount of complexity, and you could get lost in this mode alone for hours, and it's not even the proper game. You know what's weird? I know quite a few people who get the Super Monkey Ball series and the Ape Escape series mixed up, and while the most obvious reason for that is because they both feature cartoon monkey characters, they also both have an emphasis on minigames, and their music sounds extremely similar too, going for an upbeat electronic vibe. Take a listen. Weird, huh? Another similarity is that they're both quite underappreciated series that deserve another chance in the spotlight, but I digress. I won't go through all of the minigames here because the amount of content could warrant its own video with how much there would be to talk about, but just to talk about a couple of them, you've got this awesome fighting game where you need to knock other players off of a platform while it slowly collapses in on itself. 
and there's power-ups to collect to give you different abilities. There's a shooting game which basically acts like a light gun game, but instead of using an actual light gun, you just move a cursor around on the screen. And at the end of each level featured in this minigame, there's even a boss fight, and again, loads of power-ups to collect too. Then there's also several sports-focused games, like tennis, golf and bowling, which all have quite a lot of depth. Like how golf and bowling not only have the standard games, but also a more wacky version with gimmicky golf courses and bowling lanes. The tennis game too has just loads of customization. You can play doubles, singles, you can include tie breaks, and the level of customization rivals some actual tennis games I've played. All of these minigames showcase how much detail the developers put into every single aspect of the game. Every single minigame features lots of customization too, with rule sets and different modes within each minigame to try out. It's nothing short of incredible. This game completely and utterly blows Banana Blitz HD out of the water. Its music is better, its level design is better, its level theming is better, its story is better, it's got far more content, the multiplayer is on another level completely, and the minigames destroy what's featured in Banana Blitz HD. Having said that though, there are two ways in which Banana Blitz HD is better in my opinion. One of which is the customization element, which is absent from Deluxe, but the other thing is much more important, the controls. I mean, you could argue that Banana Blitz HD has better graphics, but I don't know. I would almost argue that Deluxe looks a lot better because of its stronger visual style. And it just goes to show that having a good visual style is in some cases more important than having good graphics on a purely technical level. Going back to the controls though, it's not that the controls in Deluxe are bad, not by any means. However, I will say that I felt a lot more in control of the ball movement in Banana Blitz HD than I did in Deluxe. I think with it being newer and controllers having become more accurate, the newer controllers allow games to pick up on much more subtle analogue stick movement. Either that, or maybe it's just that Super Monkey Ball Deluxe itself doesn't pick up on these more subtle movements. Whatever the reason, it sometimes felt like when I was moving forward but very slightly trying to move left or right, it wasn't detecting that movement and just continuing to move forward in a straight line. Which then results in you overcompensating by turning more harshly, which can then make you fall off of the stage if you're on a narrow ledge. Like I say, it's not the worst thing ever and the game is still completely playable, but I did find myself wishing the game was picking up on my more pinpoint movements at times, and I never felt like that was something missing from Banana Blitz HD. I really hope that we get a new Super Monkey Ball game that more closely follows the DNA of the original two games rather than the newer ones. Or, I mean alternatively, you could just give us Super Monkey Ball Deluxe HD. Fix up the controls slightly, give us new characters and unlockables, make the loading faster, introduce online functionality with leaderboards and maybe even just straight up online multiplayer, and bam, you've got the best Super Monkey Ball game ever made. I'm giving Super Monkey Ball Deluxe a 7 out of 10. It's awesome and it's probably the best game in the entire series. Not that I can really say that because I've only played two of them, but still. There's not a lot of negative things to say about it. The loading is a bit distracting and janky, the controls are very, very slightly dated, there's no unlockable characters or skins, and perhaps my biggest complaint is that it should have featured a co-op mode, especially with the competition mode being maybe a little bit lacklustre, but I still appreciate its inclusion nonetheless. And that's about it. I mean, one thing you could say which is a fairly valid criticism in my opinion is that this is one hell of a difficult game, despite how it looks. Like seriously, some of these levels will have you screaming at the TV in frustration and I imagine that a lot of people would find that off putting. But slowly overcoming those obstacles and improving at the game over time is rewarding, and it's not like there's no enjoyment to be had even if you are rubbish at it like I am. Well, we've covered Super Monkey Ball Deluxe and Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, and they're both of the games in the series that I've played. Even with my limited knowledge of the series though, it's easy to see why Super Monkey Ball Deluxe is a fairly beloved title, while Banana Blitz isn't. 
Banana Blitz just introduces so many gimmicks that aren't necessary and just clutter up the experience, whereas Deluxe keeps it straightforward and is a better game for it. Let me know in the comments what your favourite game in the series is, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!